Bonjour tout le monde, j'espère que ça va bien, j'espère que vous profitez de l'été et que vous restez rafraîchis durant cette période. La ville, depuis le 6 juillet dernier, a ouvert la plupart de ses plages, de, de, des pataugeoires et des piscines extérieures. Une seconde vague sera ouverte dès le lundi 13 juillet prochain. On rencontre la Société de sauvetage de l'Ontario ainsi que les gens de l'aquatique à la ville d'Ottawa pour nous en parler davantage, comment on fait pour rester rafraîchi et à la fois en toute sécurité durant cette période de COVID en profitant de l'eau. Salut tout le monde, notre vidéo blog cette semaine, on se retrouve sur le bord de la piscine, ici euh, la piscine Jeannet au Parc Optimiste. Je suis euh, accompagné de Sean Duffy qui est euh, notre représentant régional euh, au sein de la table de la Société de sauvetage de l'Ontario. Sean, merci pour le beau travail que tu as accompli euh, à la Société de sauvetage. Parle-nous un petit peu euh, de, de ton rôle, puis du rôle de la Société euh, de sauvetage en Ontario. Merci Matt. Euh, je suis le président régional pour la Société de sauvetage. Alors, je suis un lien entre le bureau, euh, le, le personnel payé. Je suis bénévole et je suis ici pour euh, assister aux, euh, aux opérateurs de piscine, aux, euh, aux sauveteurs euh, et au public pour donner le message de prévention euh, de la noyade. Prévention de la noyade, on a eu quelques incidents euh, tragiques déjà à Ottawa dans des zones non supervisées. C'est important de le souligner. Euh, le, la Société de sauvetage a, a publié un rapport qui parle du, euh, des statistiques en Ontario. Qu'est-ce que tu pourrais nous dire? C'est un rapport qui est sorti plus tôt cette semaine. Oui, on, on sait que euh, 70 des noyades euh, mortelles au Canada se déroulent dans les, yeux, euh, les, les zones euh, d'eau libre. C'est important de connaître nos, nos limites et euh, surveiller les environnements pour les dangers. Nous suggérons toujours de nager dans une zone surveillée par les sauveteurs, une plage par exemple avec les sauveteurs et une piscine sont les zones les plus sécuritaires. Mais euh, si vous promenez dans, dans l'eau libre, c'est important de nager avec quelqu'un d'autre, un ami. On dit nager à deux, c'est toujours mieux. Puis euh, de porter la veste de flottaison en embarcation, puis dans l'eau euh, comme nageur si vous n'êtes pas euh, très fort euh, comme nageur. C'est important. On a, on a vu malheureusement des situations. D'un autre côté, on a une réalité. En la période de COVID, on, il y a une réouverture. Ce n'est pas le même genre de réouverture. Certains diront « Hey, c'est bizarre. Alors, pourquoi ouvrir les piscines dans cette période-ci? » Pourrais-tu parler de, de, des recommandations de la Société canadienne euh, de sauvetage? Et puis, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire pour les piscines locales? Absolument. Dès le début de la pandémie, euh, la Société de sauvetage a travaillé fort avec les opérateurs, avec les autorités de santé publique pour développer des ressources pour ouvrir les piscines dans une façon sécuritaire. On sait qu'on veut que tout le monde, euh, on, on, on protège la santé publique, on veut que tout le monde euh, est en bonne santé, mais si on n'a pas des lieux de baignade surveillés, euh, c'est un, un défi pour les noyades. Fait qu'on veut des environnements sécuritaires où les personnes peuvent euh, se rafraîchir dans cette canicule pour, euh, et, et de trouver un environnement où ils peuvent s'entraîner et de, de baigner dans une manière sécuritaire. Tu as entièrement raison. Si on prend l'exemple ici, euh, à la piscine Janet, il y a plein de mesures qui ont été prises au niveau euh, de l'entrée puis euh, de la période jusqu'à ce, jusqu ce qu'on se rend sur la piscine. Sur la piscine, l'ancienne capacité était tout près de 100 nageurs. Maintenant, durant cette période-ci, c'est 16 nageurs. Et puis, on est limité à une heure. Donc, il y a plein de processus, évidemment. Entre la, la période d'une heure, il y a un nettoyage complet des, euh, des lieux. Euh, donc, des mesures qui sont importantes, des mesures qui sont euh, essentielles et aussi des mesures qui sont sensibles euh, à la température chaude. Les gens ont besoin d'accès à l'eau. L'été, c'est une période de rappel aussi. On essaie de prévenir. Euh, il y a euh, une semaine dédiée à la prévention euh, des noyades euh, en Ontario qui a lieu à la, à la mi-juillet. Peut-être tu peux nous parler plus brièvement euh, de cette initiative. Absolument. La troisième semaine en juillet chaque année, c'est la semaine nationale de prévention de la noyade. Ici en Ottawa, où cette année, c'est le 19 juillet au 25 juillet. Puis le maire Jim Watson a fait une proclamation de la semaine ici en Ottawa. Et puis tout ça fait partie d'une grande initiative de la Coalition euh, de la prévention de la noyade à Ottawa. C'est un groupe important de plusieurs partenaires. Euh, puis tu peux nous donner un petit peu plus d'aperçu. Moi, ça, ça fait longtemps que je suis à, je connais bien les partenaires, mais pour le public. On a aussi la Coalition qui joue un rôle important. Euh, plusieurs partenaires y font partie. Est-ce que tu pourrais peut-être souligner un petit peu euh, leur rôle? Puis, euh, l'ampleur de, de l'initiative. 
Oui, bien sûr. Ici en Ottawa et en Gatineau, on a la Coalition pour la prévention des noyades d'Ottawa qui regroupe 19 euh, entités qui travaillent ensemble pour prévenir la noyade. On, on a des membres du service d'urgence, des hôpitaux, des groupes communautaires puis des groupes récréatifs. Puis le but, c'est de prévenir la noyade et les traumatismes reliés à l'eau. On veut que tout le monde s'amuse bien près de l'eau euh, cet été, mais on veut que tout le monde le fasse d'une euh, méthode sécuritaire. Excellent, merci. Merci. Morning, Chris. Thank you for taking the time. It is a, another warm day in Ottawa. Um, your team has been uh, super, teams across the city have been very active at uh, getting us uh, ready and started this week. Tell us about, uh, you've been in aquatics for a number of years. Uh, tell us about, tell us uh, the logistics of getting our pools up and started during a COVID period. Yeah, so when, when everything first started to shut down, uh, the city immediately started into a plan of what day one ready would look like. So we had a plan in place. We just weren't sure of numbers or dates or, or any of that, but we had a plan of what it might look like. So the Ford decision came uh, a little bit early, earlier than we thought, but right away we were action plan. We pulled people back off deployment. So a lot of us were already at Ottawa Public Health and long-term care. So getting everybody back into the, uh, back at uh, working at Aquatics and pulling, you know, over 700 part-time staff back into payroll, back into the facilities, trained, ready to go, pools filled. Uh, we did it in about a couple of weeks uh, with the part-time staff, but the staff were so excited to be coming back. They were more than happy to work. They, they wanted to be poolside this summer, not at home. And so, you know, everybody was really excited to get the public back here. You shared with me briefly uh, as we were setting up the, uh, when, when the call went out to lifeguards, how quickly uh, the responses were and how, how, uh, how easy it was because everyone understood the importance and obviously uh, it's summer employment for many of them. Yeah, the job of a lifeguard and instructor isn't just a, a, an everyday job, it's a passion. You want to make sure that people have a place to go, to exercise, kids in the water playing, because we know that if uh, there's nowhere to go where there's lifeguards, people are going to find a place to swim anyways. Yeah. So having those lifeguards up and ready to go and the waiting pools open, it's it, the waiting pool is one of my favorite programs. Uh, the, the pools are bright blue, the staff are outside. Uh, families are there. The water's chilly, so it's a good place to <laughs> it's a good place to cool off. So uh, we're ready to go. The the staff are, are there right now, uh, sweeping the pool and getting the water ready. It's uh, you're quite right that obviously our indoor pools are what people think when they think city aquatics, but uh, outdoor pools and wading pools play an important role in each community. Uh, it's fresh water. Tell us about uh, maybe. At a high level, what's what can we expect going into our wading pools? Our our indoor pools is a little more controlled because people come in, they, they pay, and we have control over uh, the setting and the programming. And, an outdoor wading pool in general is a little less programmed uh, because it's free. Uh, so how do you manage that, and, and what what will differ from uh, normal years? Yeah, so the indoor pools have a control that access, exactly what you're saying. So we can educate people how the flow is going to work. Uh, we can really control the numbers. So with the waiting pools, we've also done the square meters and decided, okay, this is the safe amount of distance everybody needs uh, to be in the waiting pool. So we've determined those numbers for all the waiting pools across the city. And so we ask that uh, families come and visit the table where the lifeguard, the waiting pool attendants are. Uh, which is not uh, new because we do have a swim test uh, so that uh, people are used to coming and seeing the attendants and that's where we limit the numbers and we limit the time so uh, for example at Jean Morin we'll have up to 15 people in the water but only for 30 minutes at a time so you can you can walk in for sure and just see if there's room if not you can book for later that day or the next day and that's an interesting part is we're trying to give as much access as possible but we're, we're asking people to be sensitive. So what I, I think you just said about thir everyone gets about 30 minutes to 30 minute period at a time so that we can get more uh, capacity out of, of the facility. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so far so good. Uh, of course, a lot of the population that comes to the, the waiting pool at Jean Marais, there's summer camps. Uh, so they'll be visiting in the next couple of weeks, but again, volume is down all around. So we haven't had to turn away anybody yet. How the lifeguards coping? I know you shared with me some of the tactical approach. If there was, if there are incidents, how 
how uh, we're also protecting our, our staff, but able to obviously uh, respond to the urgency. Yeah, so we incorporated back into our training kits a, a bag valve mask, which puts more distance between the lifeguard and somebody who's in distress. So that's one of the barriers and we have full PPE. So we have eyewear, we have uh, um, surgical masks, we have gowns, uh, we've always had gloves in place. Uh, but what we've done is we've, we've changed our lifeguarding. So normally, as you know, Matt, you're a lifeguard. There's a first guard who sees the incident, goes in and, and initiates treatment. But in a rescue situation now, where a lifeguard is gonna be wet, it would be very difficult for them to don all the PPE. So we have actually a designated first aid guard that has their PPE ready to go. So in case of a, a situation, they can don the PPE on, and they'll be dry and ready to react. Um, and then we're also doing social distancing lifeguard, which takes us back from National Lifeguard, where we do contact rescues, and this is where we train first guard, second guard, third guard. We're going back to a little bit more like a bronze rescue, where we're using the ladder approach, where we're talking to victims, we're using rescue aids between us and somebody in distress, and then asking parents to help us with the first aid. So if somebody does uh, slip and fall and they, they scuff their knee, that we're providing the first aid uh, gauze and bandages and so on, but we're asking mom or dad or a guardian, uh, guardian to help us out. It's great to hear from you on that. It, it gives uh, a lot of reassurance for many uh, of management of separation and physical distancing in the pool as much as possible and, and obviously limited capacity, but the strategy around that. And then uh, through that also keeping our, our team safe and healthy. Uh, so very good overview. Uh, you also shared with me briefly, um, you, you play a role with the Life Saving Society Ontario. You've been a, in aquatics at the city for many years. Yeah. And you, you, uh, you see that other municipalities are looking to Ottawa specifically, who's well organized, who's, who's careful and, and sensitive in their reopening. Can you maybe share what you've heard from, uh, from other smaller municipalities? Yeah, so being with the Life Saving Society, it's like the city, we're a big family, so we're the certifying body for all the lifeguards across Canada. Uh, I'm heavily involved in the public education uh, portion of the society. And uh, the city of Ottawa, we're seen as leaders and people have been turning to us to because we're a large group and we have a lot of collaboration, we share a lot of ideas and in all planning for this day one ready, we've been collaborating and building up teams of training, building up teams, how are we going to run lane swim? So we, we have a, a great structure to, to be an advisor to some of the smaller municipalities that perhaps the, the recreation staff are the ones that are, you know, cutting the grass, you know, taking care of the baseball diamond, running the pool, and maybe a beach. So they're running a little bit solo. So they turn to us and say, what are you guys doing and how are you handling it? So it's been a great pleasure to share, you know, all the knowledge that the city's put together and, and to be able to share that with you know, some of the smaller municipalities. Absolutely. The, uh, the last number of weeks have been very warm in Ottawa. Uh, we spoke with Sean from the uh, Life Saving Society Ontario on some of the drowning prevention measures. Uh, do, you have any, uh, do you have any additional element you'd like to share with our community in terms of uh, drowning prevention and, and, uh, and what we have to offer? I, I think many will be shy of taking swimming lessons or many might not have the funds and I know that the city's doing what it can to facilitate uh, the removal of some of those barriers. Yeah, so the city really does try to remove those barriers. So what we've done, uh, we, we want the kids to get back into the pool and continue learning because that foundation of being a good swimmer and understanding water safety. So when the lifeguards are teaching, it's not just that they're teaching them how to swim, it's how to be safe around the water and how to self-rescue and how to recognize when you're in distress and how to get to safety. So the city uh, registration opens up Monday and lessons start on the 20th. And so we've got a lot of private lessons running. We've got uh, low ratio lessons for kids that are in swim kids form below. We're asking that a parent or guardian get in the water with them to help with the physical manipulation and help us remain with that social distancing. So on top of uh, City of Ottawa's hand in hand program, which allows for subsidy for the learn to swim, uh, also now we're removing another barrier. So if you come in with your CERB proof that you're on the CERB, that we can also use that to help you get assistance uh, to help pay for those lessons. We don't see financial uh, ability as any kind of barrier or any, anything to be worried about. We welcome you in. We try and get as many kids in the water as we can. So again, you can use that uh, financial assistance as well to pay for drop-ins if you're not wanting to commit to a group of lessons. 
uh, you can apply for the hand in hand and then use that uh, to subsidize your drop in fees as well. Access, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then uh, we always need more more city staff uh, in terms of aquatics. So uh, there there, are, there is posting online. Oh yeah, absolutely. Doors open. Uh, come on in if you want to just drop by your resume and we can walk you through uh, the application process. But you can go to Ottawa.ca click on jobs, we're even uh, taking kids now that are 15 years old for some of our, our jobs. So yeah. certainly stop by if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to help you out with that. That's excellent. Uh, Chris, anything to add before uh, we wrap up? Uh, come down to the pool, it's gonna be 45 <laughs> degrees today and the staff are there. Uh, they were pretty tired yesterday at the end of the day after being out in the heat, but they're uh, refreshed and ready to go again today. So uh, come on down to the pool. Thanks for that. I want, please uh, pass along our, our thanks to the entire staff. We have amazing staff at our beaches, at our wading pools, at our indoor and outdoor pools. It is warm outside and, and the team's ready to ensure that people can access the water and refresh safely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank warm you. Up.